Hi all, Bip Baxter here with WattOS Linux. Wanted to give a quick rundown of WattOS R10. The new version has been released today and it's out there on social media and other places. Wanted to follow that up with a quick video of the R10 LXDE uh, desktop. Um, as noted in the um, release announcement and on the forums, the uh, microwatt version has been delayed a little bit. So we are only covering um, R10, release 10, 32 and 64 bit LXDE desktop. So this is the default login. I'm going to give you a quick run through. I won't waste your time relative to all of the things that are here, but um, it's got the default LXDE desktop that's got some customizations on it to make it a little more uh, visually pleasing from the default. Um, the file manager um, is PCMAN FM, um, well known, been around for a long time. Um, the versions, for those of you who care about versions, are right here. It's based on Ubuntu 16.04.1 LTS, uh, latest updates as of the beginning of this week. 44036 kernel, uh, Firefox 38. Uh, the music pay player is called Lollipop. You may or may not be familiar with it. I'll give you a quick run through of that. Um, Gthumb for editing photos. Uh, FileZilla for file transfers. Um, FTP, SFTP. Uh, transmission is your BitTorrent client, events for looking at PDFs. Uh, we also added the GUI to the uh, UFW, the un Uncomplicated Firewall, um, because um, a lot of people run without one, and um, this allows you to turn it on easily, kind of manage what you want to block and what you don't want to block. And uh, my notion always is, is if it's easy to use, people will use it. If it's complicated or mysterious, they're not. So putting a GUI in front of a firewall for your personal desktop so you can turn it on and manage it um, made sense. So those are the versions. There's more details, like I said, in the, in the uh, forums and release announcements and the wiki, which is going to be updated along with a, a couple of videos. Um, one of the things about WattOS that we've uh, always prided ourselves on is, is trying to be low clutter and um, high speed. Um, it works with a low memory footprint and um, is very responsive. So anything you launch is usually launches pretty darn quick. Um, I've tested 32-bit uh, on a system as old as 13 years old, 64-bit on a little newer system, 8, 9 years old, um, and I've tested the various uh, options there. Uh, again, File Manager, uh, Firefox 48 is the web browser, and... Um, I've left everything default on that so that you can go in and change the privacy settings that you want to whatever you want them to uh, for privacy and security um, rather than making those settings for you. Um, so all of the things are here. You can turn off the Firefox health reporter and crash reporter and those kinds of things if you want to and uh, telemetry and all of those things you can turn off. So we've set that, uh, left that at default. Um, uh, the menu is very straightforward. Again, most of you are probably, if you're watching this, might be familiar with it. Very straightforward menu paradigm. Uh, we've included a calculator. KeyPassX is for managing passwords, so you can put encrypted passwords in here. There's nothing in here to start, but you start a new database and you can start storing your passwords encrypted, which I would encourage everybody to do. Um, simple text editor, leaf pad. Um, the screenshot application, um, again, really simple. And... Uh, you can use it anywhere. Um, Gthumb is a new addition to WattOS so that you can edit pictures easily. It's not uh, uh, overly complicated, uh, which was the notion of uh, trying to get away from programs like GIMP and other ones, which are fantastic, but the vast majority of people maybe only want to rotate a photo or change the color or crop something. Uh, things like that without getting too complicated. So Gthumb kind of fits that bill. Uh, it fits the bill of being fast. And uh, so we've included that. Um, standard PDF viewer, um, Lollipop, and we've included pulse audio volume control to make it easy. You can also control it down here on the, on the panel if you want, um, or you can open it up in, in pulse audio. Lollipop's a cool music player. Um, you can put your local albums in there, but you can also uh, do radio streaming uh, music. Um, we've added a couple channels here by default just so that you can uh, listen to things that are... 
and uh, listen to different things. But you can actually add any stations you want if you just click on the search icon here and just search for anything you want. If I want to find the latest in New Wave, I can do search for New Wave, and there we go. So it uses a tune-in radio um, to find these, so it's pretty cool. You can uh, quickly find things you might want to listen to. Then click on the plus to add it to uh, this list down here, and away you go. Or you can manually add it by just clicking radio and putting the URL in. So it supports those, and I've uh, added, made sure that we've got the uh, the right libraries in there, so um, most streaming stations should work right out of the box. So fun music player, I usually leave it running in the background while I'm doing stuff, and uh, um, that's a fun thing. The um, All of the other things here are system tools and preferences. Printing um, capability has been in included by default, so um, you do have uh, a local uh, ability to add printers without having to add any additional software and um, it should work without any issues. The, um, you can customize, you, know, you can add additional proprietary drivers. It should detect those for you. Uh, the firewall configurations right here, you have to obviously be an administrator, put in your password to do that, and you can simply turn on your firewall if you want. And it gives you a little overview of, of uh, how it works and what you do with it. And um, you can read through that and check it out. You can have uh, different rules. You can get as complicated as you want for all kinds of uh, traffic in and out, what types of traffic it is, all of those kinds of things, even applications that work, you know, work with it and all of those things. So at the very minimum, you can turn it on, deny incoming, allow outgoing, and uh, it gives you a nice easy way to be able to see uh, what's working and uh, with your firewall without worrying about getting to a command line for those of you who don't like uh, doing that. So we've added that little quality of life thing. Um, all of the other things you would expect to see are here. You can edit your network here. You can do software and updates. Software and updates by default are set for one week. It checks weekly for security updates. Um, it does not install them automatically. Um, that's a pet peeve of mine. I like to choose when I install things. So we've left that up to you as well. So you can go change that if you'd like. Uh, the Synaptic Package Manager is the default tool to install software. So if you want to install software, this is the place to go. You launch that, you click search, you find what you're looking for, and away you go. You can also search by sections. So if you're looking for different things by sections rather than not knowing what you're looking for, maybe you're just looking for something, you, you want to find a game, um, you want to uh, look at different things that you may not, you may want to explore a little bit. You can click on any of those and it'll give you a quick uh, uh, description of what those things are. Or you can again just simply search. Additionally, at any time if you want, you can mark all upgrades, apply, and it will update your system for you. The software manager will check every week. If you want to do it manually, you can do it in here. You can also do it in the command line, of course, but some people don't like to do that. You can customize look and feel here, add more themes, change the colors, change the icons. We've tried to trim the icon list down to keep the size smaller. Um, and you can uh, do all of the typical customizations you would expect. The desktop, if you right click on it, you can go to desktop preferences to change your wallpaper. If you want to change your wallpaper, you can change your text size and colors. Um, all of those kinds of things you can do right here. Um, additionally, with the file manager, same thing. You can edit the preferences um, or you can do it, um, or you can open a terminal from any folder. But if you want to edit the preferences, if I can get my fingers to work, um, you can do it here and change it to, I want to look at icons rather than uh, detailed list view, and I can see icons. Also, you can get the applications by clicking applications here, and you can see the different classes of applications and get to them this way. So a couple different ways to get around. Um, again, the notion here is that you have a basis of an installation. Um, it runs, again, low memory and um, will bring old hardware back to life pretty nicely. 32-bit um, and 64-bit does uh, work. Um, I've also tested 32-bit on um, non-PAE uh, processors. For those of you who care, um, you have to enter a command line option to do that um, at boot. And um, I will create a separate video to show that for a subset of the people that might care about using... Uh, Pentium M class 
older processors that uh, maybe don't have that option. You can force PAE, um, and uh, I've been able to make that work. So go out to the uh, website, download WattOS, give it a spin on a virtual machine, or throw it on a thumb drive, or um, and uh, plug it in and try it on your laptop or desktop. You can try it without touching your host operating system to see if you like it, or go dust off that computer that you haven't been using in the closet and uh, install this on it and create a system for home use, your kids, um, whatever you'd like to use it for. Well, we encourage people to not throw things in the landfill and, uh, and uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. And one of the things that we pride ourselves on is being able to do that with WattOS. Thanks for the support, everybody. Go uh, download it, write up a review, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Give us some feedback if you find some things you don't like or bugs, and uh, we're always trying to make it better. Thanks much. Hope everybody's doing well, and I will see you again soon.